He gave me something, so I want to share it with you. It's just amazing how he does these things sometimes. He'll make you get all the way to church. Thank you, got it ready, and say, well, now time out. I need you to go ahead. <laughs> Hallelujah, I'm obedient. God began to speak to me about chasing him and the pursuit of him when we're exhausted but still pursuing God. And I thought about Lakey. When, I would, when he was four years old, he still likes to play chase, but when he was about four years old, Mr. Price, he loved for me to chase him. And I could have caught him any time, but I would stay a little bit just so he stayed ahead of me. So he would look behind me and laugh and he would giggle and I'd get real close to him like I was going to tag him and he'd think he got away and glory to God, he'd just light up and put smiles all over his face. Then I would come that time when I would tag him and then I would take off running and he would pursue me. And I'm taking you somewhere, church, stay with me. He would chase him behind me and he would get right up here up on me, David, and I would move a little bit faster where he couldn't catch me. And I would watch his face go from smiles to cheering, Miss Judy to happy. This Lynn, he looked like he just about had me, and then I'd take it from him. And he looked like he was ready to give up. He would look like he wanted to stop pursuing me and just stop and quit. It was in them moments when I turned around, Jimmy, and I pick him up. And I'd embrace him, Natalie. And I'd hug him and I'd kiss all over him. And I'd tell him, I seen you, boy, you real fast. I'd encourage him in the chase. What I want to talk to you today about is exhausted, but still pursuing. See, there's a God in heaven, church. He wants you to chase him. He wants you to pursue him. He knows there's times when you're chasing him and you feel like you can't catch him. He feels like, you feel like I just want to give up. I can't make it. I can't even muster up enough faith the size of a mustard seed to move an anthill more or less a mountain. God knows what that feels like in your life when you're pursuing him but you can't catch him. He knows what you feel like when you're chasing and you feel like you're just running around in circles. Come on. Has anybody been exhausted but still pursuing? So I don't know about you, but I've been exhausted more times than I can count, but I never stopped pursuing God because I want you to hear this before we get into this sermon. If you will chase the Holy God, if you will pursue God in everything that he does, I'm talking about chasing out of the Lord in the things that he loves, in the things that he likes, the things that are holy in his sight, the things that are pleasing to God. He will lead you, church, listen to me, as you chase him. He will lead you to where he wants to take you. Let me say it again so you understand. When you're chasing God, he's leading you to where he wants to take you. He's got a purpose in your life. He has a plan in your life. He knows you're tired. That's where you get your strength from. And your weakness is where he's strong. I know what it feels like to be exhausted. Church, we all do. We've been exhausted from life. Sometimes it beats you down. And you just get plumb tired. I'm talking about life happens and things come up, situations happen, valleys come, mountains come, things happen. You are exhausted, but still in pursuit of God. Man. I want you to hear this. I want to talk to you about ten men. Can we shut that door right there? Ten men that were exhausted. But still in pursuit of God. I'm getting ready to preach a sermon you have never heard before. You might have heard this text, but I assure you, because I got it from the Holy Ghost, so I know it didn't come from man. I don't seek after some preacher to tell me how to preach or some sermon outline. I seek after the Spirit of God that speaks through me and to you. So with that being said, I know it didn't come from no man. Come on. Church, we in here today exhausted. But I'm urging you to keep pursuing God. I was last night before I get into this, this, me and Danny and some brothers, we was out there fishing Randall. I looked out across there and me and Danny was sitting up on top of the pier and we was, we weren't really fishing. We were just kind of just talking about the Lord. And I looked out across there and I seen all these men. I seen Kevin. I seen Randall. I seen I seen uh, who all I see there? Uh, Brother Wayne. I, I was a, there was a handful of men there. I don't want to miss nobody. But I want to tell you this. 
As I looked down across there, I said to myself, Mike, Lord mercy, me and these men right here used to pursue a lot of things. We used to chase after a lot of things. But they never were of God. But I met a man named Jesus that changed everything in my life. And then when I looked down on a bank, I see them down there that used to pursue bars, that pursued drinking, that pursued drugs, that pursued women. And then I see them sitting on a bank giving glory to God, sitting down on a bank in the middle of nowhere. So that's what we got to get to. We got to get to where we want to get to God. We got to get to where we want to chase after the Lord. Don't you want to pursue the King of Kings? I see God at work, church. I see him at work. I said, if God can change just these 10 men, he took 11. <laughs> and he changed the world. God used us to pursue you. Use us to chase after you. And it comes to just not the men, it comes to women. Because you got to choose to chase after the Lord. Even if your man don't want to come to church, glory to God, you got to go by yourself. you got to make up your mind and your heart. Look at here. If you don't want to go, Brother Jimmy, I'm going to pursue him by myself. A lady named Anya told me a long time ago. She said, my husband won't come to church with me, and he won't go. She said, but I'll go by myself. She said, but when I get to heaven, she said, I ain't going to need him no how. I'm going to need the king of kings, and I'm going to need Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Huh. If you got your Bible, we're in Luke chapter 17. Chapter 17, beginning in verse 11. Many of you have heard this message before, but I don't believe you're going to hear it quite preached the way you're getting ready to hear it preached. These ten men were exhausted beyond measure. They were exhausted. They were beat down. They were gave up on. They were outcast. These ten men were exhausted. But I want to show you something in these ten men's life. That they were still in the pursuit of hope. I'm talking about they were still in the pursuit of God. They wanted to catch him. They just forgot that he could show up in a place where they were at. As we get into this text, it's in Luke chapter 11, 17, beginning in verse 11. 17, beginning in verse 11. Everybody there, amen? amen. Let me get there. Hallelujah. Now it happened. As Jesus went to Jerusalem and Jesus passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Let me break that down for you real quick because sometimes you just can't read the word of God like it's a novel glory to God. He speaks to you even in the first word. See, when he was coming through here, Jesus was walking through the midst. Let me let you know where that is. It's on a road to nowhere. It's on a back road that not many know about. It's a back road that people stay away from. Miss Nancy said this road right here, this very place you sit in, used to be a bar room. It used to be trouble. She said her dad told her, when you go down this road, he said, you go all the way around York, South Carolina. Don't you come down this road because there's a trouble going on in this building. I'm talking about a road that the church won't go to. I'm talking about a road that nobody will go to, but glory that God I serve a king that'll show up in a bar room. I serve a king that'll show up in a drug house. I saw it. I got a king right now in the name of Jesus that'll show up where all hope's gone and give hope. You should have hollered hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now it happened as he went through Jerusalem and passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, verse 12. Then as Jesus entered a certain village. There met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. Let me break this down for you. These ten men right here, they had a disease. It was balls. They just looked like something out of a horror book. Just be honest with you. They had skin, they had skin, they had skin disease. Let's put it that way. The lepers was a, something that you could see physically on the outside. It wasn't a disease on the inside. It was on the outside. And everybody, I'm talking about the church folks, the Pharisees, the children of God, the disciples, all of them, when they seen these men, they didn't even ever come in encounter with them because they were unclean. Something was wrong with them, Jill. They were on the outside of the city because they weren't allowed in the real city where everything was going on. They weren't allowed in the churches. 
They wouldn't be allowed nowhere except they're on their road to nowhere. They're a little village in the middle of nowhere, church. This is where these ten men are at. Exhausted, but still in pursuit. I want you to hear it. These boys, can you imagine looking like that? And everywhere you go, everybody look at you like you're some disease. You're disgusted. Because you just had a disease that came upon you. You couldn't help it. You didn't do anything to make it happen. It just came upon you. Just like cancer. Just like sickness. Them boys couldn't help it. They didn't bring it upon themselves. The disease came upon them. Can you see them out there exhausted? Wore out. They're the outcasts. Nobody wants to be around them. Nobody wants to see them. Nobody wants to lay eyes on them. Scared they might catch something. Stay away. You got your own place over here. We stay over here. You stay over there in the middle of nowhere. Can you imagine how exhausted they were? I want to take you somewhere. I want you to hear this. Verse 13. What a beautiful sight this must have been in their life. And they lifted up their voice because their eyes didn't see something. <laughs> the eyes that didn't see Jesus. And they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. See, if you read it from the back, it says they stood afar off. You know what that meant when they seen somebody coming? Let me let you know how exhausted they were, how much all hope was gone. When they, Jesus came through their village, their town, through their road, they stood afar off, Miss Vicky. They didn't want to get too close because somebody was coming, Reese, and we didn't know who it was because nobody comes here except the ones that look like us, the outcasts, the one the world didn't give up on, the one nobody wants nothing to do with, but I serve a God that'll show up where nobody else will go. Jesus showed up down there. And when they see him, they cry out, Jesus, have mercy on us. We're exhausted. We didn't give up on ourselves. Can you imagine? They didn't sit there and play patty cake, patty cake. They screamed out for a God to save them. They knew there was no saving themselves. They knew everybody didn't give up. And in fact, they probably didn't give up on themselves. But something changed that day. Hope. Oh, came in the house. Hope came walking down the road. There's the blind man here. There's the one that makes the deaf ears here. There's the one that raised the dead. Glory to God, he heals all diseases, David. I bet he can touch me. Have mercy on me, Jesus. I fell down. Have mercy. Nowhere in the Bible have I read this. Jesus goes through and he says, he spit sometimes, Jim. He takes some clay and he rub it on our eyes. He tell them stand up, rise up, <laughs> sit down, lay down, get up. But you listen to what the Lord says here. I wanted God to get to speak to me on my way to church. So when Jesus saw them, I know your Bible says he, I like you in his name. Hallelujah. So when Jesus saw them, Jesus said to them, go show yourself to the priest. Did you know that Jesus said you're healed? No. Did Jesus say, go wash yourself like he did before? He didn't say none of that, did he, Jill? He said, go show yourself to the priest. Listen to it. And so it was that they went. They were cleansed. See, they began to pursue after things of God. See, God said, go, and they went, Reese. So when they started going, they started pursuing the will of God. Blessings started coming down upon them. Amen. But something happens in this text in just a second that turns into a lot of church folks. I'm going to show you. Church, I want you to pursue God with everything in you. I don't want you to pursue him just when the blessings are coming down. I want you to pursue him when nobody else is around you. I want you to pursue him when you feel like you're by yourself. Because I'm trying to tell you, it's in dark moments. It's in the middle of a valley. It's in the middle of nowhere when you're pursuing God. And when you're chasing after the king of kings. Where he'll lead you, guide you, and teach you the things of him. That's what I'm chasing after is a God 
a holy God that loves me when I don't know how to love myself or love no one else. He still loves me. Amen. He'll show up, church. But he wants you to chase him. He wants you to pursue after him. Not because he wants you to chase him and he ain't going to let you catch him. He's not a, a God that's evil. He's trying to lead your hard-headed self somewhere. The world's trying to lead you somewhere. We pursue everything but the things of God. The whole world got excited about a Mayweather fight, didn't they, last night? The whole world. If we got excited about that on Sunday morning, the church would have to build another one. People don't get excited about Jesus the way they do the clips. They don't get excited about Jesus until they meet him. Church, I'm trying to teach you something here. I'm trying to tell you right now, as your brother, your friend, and as your master, if you ever want the blessings from God to fall down on your life, you want God to lead you somewhere your mind can't wrap around, chase God. Pursue after God. Glory. Them men sit in a place all by themselves, all hope was gone. But Jesus showed up. One of the ten, you can read your text, I feel like preaching. They were walking. One of the ten, Torben, was walking. And as he's walking, he so happened to look down. Whoa! How mighty! God done healed me. Can you see? You done had all these bulls and stuff on your skin, oozing junk coming out of your skin, and all of a sudden you're walking and you see that the God of heaven just touched you and didn't even say a word. I'm talking about Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He turned back around. He turned back around, Jessica. And he chased after God. He ran up on Jesus and said, I'm pursuing you. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for saving me. You're my God. You're my Savior. You're my Lord. You're my everything. When I was in the valley and you forgot that I forgot that I didn't gave up on myself and I thought you forgot me. Glory to God, you still saved me. Amen. But you know what Jesus' question was? I'm sorry, I got excited. You know what Jesus' question was? Kevin, he said, wasn't there 10 of you? Wasn't there 10 of you here with me? I thought I healed and saved 10 of you. Where's the rest of the church? He said, there was 10 of you that was after a blessing. When I pursued you and a blessing came down upon you, when you didn't go up on yourself and I was still chasing you, when you couldn't stand up and the world gave up on you, then God Almighty and I showed up, I pursued you, I chased you, and I healed you. He said, where's the rest of them? I think if I had been me, I said, I don't know about him, Lord, but I didn't come for them. I, I came for me, and I come to tell my Lord, my Savior Jesus, thank you, thank you. Can you tell him today, thank you, church? If he's been good to you, tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Church, I want you to hear this in this text. I know some of you in here are tired. My sister Jill's in here. My sister Vicky's here. Been praying for a long time. Tired, but still pursuing you. Early. See, when prayers are not answered the way you want them to be answered, can you stop praying? You gotta keep on chasing God. You gotta keep pursuing Him because He will show up in the middle of nowhere and He'll take Him somewhere. Do you hear? That's the God that we serve. He's a Lord. He's a King. He's the Savior. He's a merciful God. And He's a God that loves me and you more than we could ever love our own children. That's how much He loves you. I stopped by here on my way to heaven to tell somebody about a man named Jesus. And about a war that you're in. Bless that baby's heart. I got excited. David's going to smack a thing that woke up the baby. Sorry, Lord. Mm -hmm. Give that baby a calm spirit. Sorry. 
If you got your Bible, I want you to just flip over to 2 Corinthians, and I'm going to close with this in just a minute. 2 Corinthians, beginning in chapter 20. I'm going to read two verses for you. And I want you to remember these verses so when you're in the middle of a pursuit and you feel like you're surrounded by enemies, when you feel like there's no way out, when you feel like you're about to go down, when you feel like you're so weak you can't stand up, when you feel like that you don't even want to go, honey, I want you to take these two verses, Will, and I want you to read them. I want you to mark them in your Bible. And I want you to remember this preacher right here telling you to keep chasing God and be in pursuit for one reason, because I want to show you something. Second Chronicles. I told you Second Corinthians, I believe. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles, chapter 20. I want you to hear this verse. I just took my singer out there. She is. Glory to God. Mally, y'all come on up here just a second. Come on up here with me. Would you be honest with me today and tell me somebody in here, God don't just give me messages out of the blue. Right. Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter 20. How many of you be honest with me today and say, I've been in pursuit, but I'm tired. Tired, Lord. I know what it feels like to be tired. And God knows what it feels like for you to be tired too. Remember what we used to be?